Hello, welcome to Variance Analysis once again. In the first part, we learned how to make flexible budgets. In this part, we will break up flexible budgets into price and quantity components and try to see what went wrong, where and by how much. This picture summarizes three levels of variance analysis. Calculation of static budget variance is the first level we have already learned, where we just look at differences in standard or budgeted costs and actual cost. At the second level, we calculate flexible budget variance and sales volume variance to learn what portion of variance was due to differences in units produced and what portion was due to wastage of money and material and labor time. In the third level that we will learn soon, we will split the flexible budget variance into price with into variances due to price difference and variances due to quantity difference. We can calculate price and quantity variances for material, labor and all variable overheads using the same formula. You can refer back to this big picture if you ever get lost anywhere. Before we dig deeper inside flexible budgets, let's learn what not to do when making flexible budgets. Do not confuse all given costs to be either variable costs or fixed costs. If a cost is variable, meaning it is changing with volume of production, but we assume by mistake it to be fixed, then our flexible budget will show the same number as static budget for fixed cost, but actual number will be changing, giving us a huge variance. Similarly, if a cost is fixed and we assume it to be variable, then we will multiply the budgeted rate with actual output, but the cost will not be changing again, giving us a big variance. Finally, note that the flexible budgets are useful largely because some costs are fixed and some are variable. If all costs were variable, we will just need to adjust static budget for a higher level or lower output, keeping per unit cost to be always the same since all costs are variable. Let us recall the steps in variance analysis before jumping in. First step is to use the variance formula and calculate variances. Second is to see how big or small the variance is. If it is too small, like under $100 maybe, it is not worth worrying about. Thirdly and importantly, decide if variance is favorable or unfavorable. Next, break it up into as small a piece as possible to find the causes of the, find out the cause of the variance. Finally, take action to avoid repeating the same mistake. Notice that there can be only two reasons why actual cost is different from budgeted cost. Either price paid for the raw materials or other inputs was too high or too low, or the quantity of inputs used for actual output is too high or too low. In this segment, we will see how to determine if the difference is due to price or due to quantity of inputs. If we use too much quantity of raw material, we must be using it inefficiently. On the other hand, if we are using lesser quantity of labor time than budgeted, we must be using our time efficiently. This is the reason why quantity variance is also called efficiency variance. But remember, there is no difference between the two. We will use the terms interchangeably. Also, we will use the words budgeted or standard to mean the same thing. So what we have on this slide is called the variance model. Let us look at it very carefully. On the left side of this model, we have actual costs of our manufacturing inputs, which can be direct material, direct labor, or manufacturing overheads. Since actual cost of, for example, direct material is just quantity of direct material purchased, times the price paid for each unit of direct material, we can write it down as AQ, which is for actual quantity, times AP, which is for actual price. Is that okay? On the extreme right side of this model, we have budgeted or standard quantity times standard prices. We need to look at this thing carefully. Note that even though it is budgeted quantity of raw material on a per unit basis, it is the amount of raw material allowed for actual level of production. Once again, the flexible budget flexes the budget by multiplying per unit budgeted quantity by actual number of units produced. So we call it standard quantity in short, but until you get it completely right, please continue to call it by its correct and long name, that is 
standard direct material allowed for actual output. Then multiply this number by budgeted or standard price to get what the company would plan to spend on actual cost sorry what the company would actually plan to sp uh, would plan to spend i'm sorry let me say it again what the company would plan to spend on actual numbers of units produced so it should be the cost of ideal cost in some sense of the actual number of units produced finally in the middle of the model we have put in one item from each of the corner boxes aq from left box and sp standard price from right box. This is to separate the variance into price and quantity. Notice that difference between the first two top boxes in holding is holding actual quantity constant and just comparing the prices in the, in the bracket as shown in the middle box of price variance. Similarly, differences between the last two top boxes is holding standard price constant and just comparing the quantity of direct material allowed versus the quantity of direct material actually used. If you add price variance and quantity variance, you will get total variance. This fact is useful in solving equations and looking for missing numbers. So please keep this in mind. Let us start with a basic example. Here, we are given standard quantity and standard price for direct material and direct labor. The actual production is 10,000 units and actual total direct material used is 980 pounds at the cost of $21 a pound and 500 labor hours at the hourly wage rate of $32 per hour have been used. Now, question one is asking us to calculate direct material and direct labor variances for price and quantity. So the first step would be to realize that we need four numbers to solve this problem. In fact, we need these four numbers to solve any problem in variance. These four numbers are actual quantity, actual price, standard quantity and standard price. Once you get them together, applying the formula and calculating, calculating the variances is quite easy. So let us start with actual quantity of direct material first. Notice that actual quantity of 980 pounds is given to us for making 10,000 units. But the standard quantity is given to us for a per unit basis. So we will have to convert our actual numbers into per unit numbers. Also, to make comparison easy, you can always convert standard numbers into total numbers by multiplying them with number of units actually produced. So actual quantity is 980 pounds and standard quantity should be how much? It is 0 0.10 pound for each unit. So for 10,000 units of actual output, how much total direct material will be allowed? It would be 10,000 times 0.10 equal to 1,000 pounds of material. Please always check when you look at actual quantity and standard quantity allowed for actual output and make sure that they look like numbers in the same ballpark. If for example your actual number is 980 pounds but your standard quantity is 0 0.10 or 1 million or something, something might be wrong. Let us get the other two numbers needed for our calculations. We need actual price and standard price. Actual price is given at $21 a pound for direct material and standard price is given at $20 per pound in the top table. Now we are ready to apply these numbers into our formula. Are you? So for price variance, we put actual quantity outside the bracket and compare the price. Price variance is 980 unfavorable because we paid more than we budgeted. For quantity variance or efficiency variance, we use standard price as the constant and compare actual quantity of direct material used with the standard quantity of direct material allowed for actual output of 10,000 units. Our standard price is 20, actual quantity is 980, standard quantity allowed for actual output is 1,000 and we get quantity variance of 4,000 favorable because the company used lesser direct material than it budgeted, meaning they used it efficiently. Now, let us repeat the same exercise for 
direct labor. Remember, the steps are the same. We have to find actual quantity, actual price, standard quantity, and standard price and apply the formula. Note that although we use the words price and quantity for all manufacturing costs, the meaning of price per unit of input is just the rate paid per hour for labor. And the quantity of input used in this context is number of hours used. So we need actual hours, standard hours, just like actual quantity and standard quantity, and actual rate and standard rate, just like actual price and standard price. So if you go back to the original problem, you will see that actual quantity or actual hours are 5200. Actual rate is given at $32 per hour. Standard quantity allowed for actual output of 10,000 units will be half an hour times 10,000 equal to 5,000 hours. And standard rate is already given at $30 an hour. Now price or rate variance will be 5200 times 32 minus 30 equal to 10,400 unfavorable because the company paid more than the standard price of $30 an hour. The quantity or efficiency variance is 30 times is 30 times I want to make sure I'm saying it right. The quantity or efficiency variance is 30 times 5200 minus 5000 equal to 6000 unfavorable because company used more hours than allowed for 10,000 units. Are you with me so far? The next question is about flexible budget variance. Remember, flexible budget variance is just the difference between what we actually spend and what we are allowed to spend for this level of output. You can either calculate it directly by using actual quantity, actual price, standard quantity, and standard price, or you can total up price variance and quantity variance to get to total flexible budget variance. This fact will be useful in solving many equations and also in cross-checking your work. In this example, you can check that total of direct material price and quantity variance is equal to flexible budget variance for direct material. Remember, price variance for direct material was 980 unfavorable on the previous slide and 400, and 400 favorable for quantity. Together, 980U plus 400F will give us 580U, which is what we have for flexible budget variance for direct material. Similarly, direct labor price variance of 10,400U and quantity variance of 6,000U together is 16,400U, which is exactly equal to flexible budget variance of direct labor. So, if you are already well familiar with the variance model, we can try to solve for some harder problems. In this problem, we are given some information about material and labor variances. Let us see what the question wants. So, first question wants the actual cost spent. Remember, actual cost minus flexible budget cost is equal to flexible budget variance. So if we add the flexible budget amount with flexible budget variance, we will have actual cost. But wait, we are not given flexible budget variance either. So how will we solve it? Again, recall that flexible budget variance is equal to the total of price variance and quantity variance, which we have. So we can add the three numbers together to get to actual cost of material as well as labor. Be careful when you add variances. Remember, unfavorable variance is positive and favorable is negative. Why is that? Because unfavorable means actual cost is bigger than standard cost, meaning the difference will be positive. Does that make sense? Here, we are given partial data and we have to figure out the missing numbers. Please remember, this is a hard problem. So if you can solve it by yourself, you are doing great. Standard, look carefully at what we are given. We are given standard quantity, 
we have standard quantity missing, but the standard price is given. Then we have actual quantity of input missing, but total actual cost of 9600 is given. We are told that this total cost of 9600 is spent on making 450 units, meaning we can figure out per unit actual cost. We are given total standard cost of 9000 and standard price of $4 a unit. So we can figure out what standard quantity allowed for actual output must be. We are also given a quantity variance of ATU. So if you don't know where to begin, try writing down the four numbers we need. Look for actual quantity, actual price, standard quantity and standard price and try to fill in what you can find. Actual quantity of direct material is missing. Actual price is also missing. But standard price of $4 is given and standard quantity allowed for each unit of output is missing too. It sounds tough, but stay with me and you will get it soon. Notice that we are given $9,000 of standard cost for 450 units of output. Dividing, we can get $20 of cost allowed for each unit. Since cost of direct material is $4 per pound, 20 divided by 4 will give us 5 pounds of direct material allowed for each unit of output. So now we have standard quantity allowed equal to 5 pounds and we have standard price equal to 4 pounds. Now we have enough to plug into our quantity variance formula. Write down the quantity variance formula and plug in what you have. You have everything other than actual quantity. Just be careful with the sign of the variance. Here it is ATU, so it is positive. But if it were to be favorable, you must put a minus sign in front. So once we get actual quantity of 2270, we can divide total actual cost of 9600 by this to get to actual price of 4.23. I'm going fast, but you can go slowly because now you have everything to solve for your price variance. You can keep all the numbers to total cost instead of per unit cost and still solve for the same price variance. I think this should be it. Have a great day.